Am I the a-hole for telling my girlfriend that we cannot afford for me to be her sugar daddy? My male 27, girlfriend 23 is absolutely beautiful. And most of her friends are also physically attractive women as well. And they like to party with rich men they meet. My girlfriend and I have been together for a couple of years. I make a decent living, but I'm not NBA rich. I don't have a trust fund. I'm not a tech millionaire. I just make a very good salary and bonuses. Enough to have paid for a good portion of my house and to have graduated without debt. I want to retire young enough to enjoy my life, so I invest and save most of my money. Not all. I'm still enjoying my life now. I'm even taking us to All Inclusive in Jamaica for the New Year's. But she is jealous of her friends. They get lavish gifts, and they go out for dinner all the time. She loves me, and we have plans for the future. But she keeps bringing up all the things her friends get from their male admirers. I finally snapped and said that I could not afford to be a sugar daddy. She said her friends aren't like that, so I pointed out that they literally do not make enough money to support the lifestyle they have. I pointed out that one of them drives a $1,000 Lexus, and she works part-time at a restaurant as a hostess. She says that I'm calling her friends workers, which I would not do, and judging them. So I asked her to explain how her friends afford dinner out at very expensive restaurants while earning minimum wage in some cases. So now she thinks I'm an a-hole for making what I feel are apt observations. She asked if I consider her that way, because I pay for everything and earn six times what she does. I told her no, that I'm proud to have a teacher for a girlfriend, but she is still sulking. Now for the top comments. You have two choices. Sit down with her and have an adult conversation, that although she may be jealous of all the gifts her friends get, you do not slash cannot get her all those same things. If you're paying for most of the luxury slash bills whatever, you get a big say in what luxuries are enjoyed. Or you can end a relationship. She sounds a bit immature, not the a-hole. I was thinking she sounds naive. Yeah, or not. It's hard to say based on this post how transactional their relationship really is. But I thought it was odd that first thing Opie did was say how beautiful she was. Not the a-hole. But if she is all about appearances and having nicer things, Please know that she will ditch you when the person who can't afford those things comes along. Exactly this. She is young and probably has a very shallow definition of love. Perhaps. Or maybe she does love Opie. But that doesn't mean that she'll ever stop being jealous of her friends and their rich men. I think Opie needs to realize that this is something he'll likely have to put up with, as long as they're in a relationship. If she loves Opie, then she would stop with the comparisons. She has to learn to be happy with where she is and what she has. If not, the jealousy will begin to override everything else. Because she will want to either push Opie to do more or find someone else to keep up. It's unhealthy. Not the a-hole. She's young and foolish. She's equating material things with someone caring about her. Her friends might not be sex workers, but they are definitely trading something that requires no effort for getting boons in life. They are what the nice guys and incels always complain about. They are who give the rest of us a bad name. I have no sympathy for them at all. Their looks will fade. And if they don't have an education or career, their 100k Lexus as sugar daddy present days will be a thing of the past. Your girlfriend needs to grow up. There's nothing to be jealous of. If she wants expensive things, she needs to shuck her little buns and work for them. Next story. Am I the a-hole for telling my best friend her grandfather is planning to disinherit her? I found out my boyfriend's grandfather is planning to leave him everything and disinherit everybody else after he answered a phone call from his grandfather while I was laying on him. I asked him about it once he got off the phone and he explained what was going on but told me not to mention it to anybody else as his grandfather didn't want them to know yet. Her sister is my best friend and I don't keep secrets from her, which he knows. She's relying on some money her grandfather promised to give her and I didn't feel right not saying anything to her so I told her what I knew. She told everyone else, and now their family's fighting and arguing over this. Their grandfather is blaming me and wants my boyfriend to leave me, because he said I'm a troublemaker. My boyfriend is also angry at me, because now his sister is refusing to speak to him or let him explain. Am I the a-hole? Info. Why is the grandfather doing that? But with the current info, you're the a-hole. Boyfriend told you not to tell anyone, and likely wouldn't have even told you had you not been next to him while he was on the phone. My boyfriend is his favorite grandchild, and because he thinks the rest of them are disappointments in comparison. They sure do sound like a disappointment if they are depending on the inheritance to plan their future. 
The only reason my best friend was relying on the inheritance is because her grandfather told her himself what he was going to leave her and that he would make sure she was taken care of so she wouldn't worry. Now that she knows it was a lie, she's making different choices to make sure she'll be okay without his help. You're the a-hole. Don't insert yourself into other people's business. Don't lie and pretend you won't say anything when you were planning on saying something. Your boyfriend should leave you. You chose your best friend over your boyfriend, OP. Your choice to make. But if I were the boyfriend, I'd probably leave you over it, knowing it'd always be second priority to my sister. I get why you did it. I'm just laying out the implication here for you. Hopefully, this isn't a very serious relationship. You're the a-hole. You were told by someone you presumably love and respect to keep a secret and just cause trouble. This was family business. None of your business to get involved. Exactly this. You were asked to keep a secret and failed miserably. You have now caused a necessary family drama. But more than that, trust is the foundation of a good relationship. And now you have shattered it by blabbing news that was not yours to share. You know the saying, when a person shows you who they are, believe them. You have shown your character or lack thereof, and your boyfriend and his grandfather are left to believe you. Next story. Am I the a-hole for not taking the option of working from home? I work for a tech company while my husband is an aspiring author. He has had some success, and we hope for more in the future. When I got pregnant, I negotiated a full year of maternity leave with my employer. I would not lose seniority or miss out of certain aspects of profit sharing. I'm sorry for being vague, but I know many of our employees are in Reddit, so I'm going to fudge some information. In return for the accommodation I made with my employer, I got a month of completely uninterrupted time with my new baby. Then I started taking on tasks from home on my own schedule. On average, it was 15 hours or so a week. My husband writes at home, so we decided that he would be the stay-at-home parent. And when I was working, he would care for our baby. It was a pretty good arrangement, I thought. And it was for about a month. Then, he would start ignoring the baby crying or claiming that the baby wanted me. That sort of thing. It started to interfere with my deal with my boss. I told him in no uncertain terms that if he kept interrupting me while I was working, I would hire a nanny for help, but take the funds out of our fund budget. The budget that pays for dinners out, vacations and hobbies. He got a point, and I got my one to two hours of uninterrupted time every day. Until recently. It is almost time for me to return to work full time. Once again, my employer was very accommodating. They were very impressed with my ability to contribute meaningfully to my group during my maternity leave. So, they offered me a choice of work from home, work in the office, or a hybrid schedule. I discussed it with my husband, and he said that I should chose to work from home so I could help more with the baby. I chose to return to the office instead. I have access to a private room at a freezer so I can store milk. I am able to interact with my team and I enjoy the environment. My husband is saying that I'm being cruel and that my baby needs me. I said I would work from home if he got a job to pay for the nanny so it didn't affect our budget. He said it didn't make sense. I almost said no, Sherlock. He wants me to be the main breadwinner while he tries to get published. He wants to enjoy life in an expensive city and he wants to stay home to write. Some of these desires are mutually exclusive without him stepping up and giving me time and space to earn a living. We just saw his family for Thanksgiving and he was complaining to his mom about me choosing to leave him at home with a baby and returning to work. She started in on me for my choice. I was embarrassed until his dad spoke up and reminded her that when my husband was born, she was a stay-at-home mom and housewife. He said that was what my husband signed up for if he didn't want a job. It just became a big argument. Now we are home and I feel bad and he says that he feels emasculated. So we are arguing. I feel like an a-hole abandoning him and our baby. But his mom thinks I am. Edit. When I say he has had success, I mean it. He wrote a novel that he self-published. It was optioned for a movie. It was a lot of money to us at a time. But after the agent and lawyers took their shares, there was a lot less. And the movie never got made. So there was no more money or publicity for his writing there. Now for the top comments. Not the a-hole. You have given him options. He is the one making it difficult for you to continue funding your home. I have tried explaining that to him. My feeling is that if he'd like to be part of a household in which he contributes nothing of value, he can move back in with his folks. The important part is, tries to get published. 
I have a friend who is a writer and it is her job, yet she has to take care of the kids while her husband works in an office. It's a lot, and she struggles to make deadlines because kids. So at first I thought Opie was being unreasonable, but if he doesn't even have a publisher, then this is basically a hobby. The sensible financial thing would be for him to get a job and work on the writing in his spare time. But this is the way he wants it, so Opie's not the a-hole. Not the a-hole. He feels emasculated? Apart from the fact that that's just an attempt at manipulation, if his masculinity is that fragile, he can fix it by getting a job. So to clarify, he wants to stay home, not work, and not take care of the baby. Essentially, he wants to contribute literally nothing to the household in terms of either money or effort? This is absurd. He is beyond entitled and selfish. You have to work, because nobody else is. If I were you, I'd be telling him I'll compromise by giving him two options. He stays home and takes care of the baby, or you hire a nanny and he can GTFO because he's dead weight at this point. Your father-in-law's right. This is what he signed up for if he didn't want a job. He has to pick one. Work or child care. He doesn't get to just say neither. This, yes. Being able to stay home and work on his writing is a huge luxury. And he seems absolutely not appreciative of this chance he has. I know a New York Times best-selling author who has a day job. He's written many books, but he had to keep working for years. He now keeps working because he enjoys it. That absolutely was not the case for a long time. Last story. Am I the a-hole for telling my wife she is the sucky friend? I-25 male married my wife 33 female this past winter. We have two kids together. 4 female and 18 months male. I work full-time, but my wife is a stay-at-home mom. The reason I mention this is that my wife has never had many friends. And by many? I mean she's had a max of 4 at any time in the years I've known her. The one friend she's always had, Kayla, 33 female, she's known for 20 years. She's 7 hours from us. Her other friends also have kids around the same age as our daughter. They are Cody, 28 female, and Casey, 35 female. They met as the kids have the same key worker at the daycare. Kayla was supposed to be my wife's maid of honor, but she got multiple trips to urgent care sick, two weeks before the wedding. Eventually, we said it was best if Kayla skipped it. My wife was gutted not to have her best friend there, but had Cody step in. A couple of days ago, I heard my wife talking to Cody and Casey about how she hadn't heard from Kayla in months and Kayla doesn't check in. They were trashing her and talking about how when they all met up with her for my wife's do show, like a box night for women, and Kayla at my wife's hometown, Kayla had been boring, awkward, and a downer the whole time. They pointed out that Kayla was a sucky, self-interested piece of suck who didn't understand how hard it was to be a mother, and they'd all needed that night because she doesn't have kids yet, and that my wife was right to cut her the duck out when she didn't show to the wedding or apologize. I waited for Casey and Cody to leave before asking my wife what the heck she meant. My wife's response was to say that it was just girl talk and that Cody was right anyway about everything she'd said. I was very quick to point out that before the others, Kayla was the only friend my wife had. She bent over backwards for my wife and my daughter and would even drop whatever she was doing to drive down in a babysitting emergency or if she just had time. I reminded her that it wasn't practical for Kayla to take off work and drive six plus hours for silly wedding tasks, and that she probably felt completely alienated in her own home in my wife's do show because I know for a fact that the only thing my wife, Casey, and Cody have in common is their kids, so it wouldn't surprise me if that was all they talked about. She desperately wants to be liked by Casey and Cody just to have people around her, so I get it. I finished by pointing out how messed up it was for my wife to agree that Kayla doesn't understand because she's not a mother when she was there through Kayla losing three babies and told her that it's her own fault that Kayla doesn't want anything to do with her anymore because she is the sucky, self-centered friend, not Kayla. My wife didn't respond. She immediately burst into tears, packed a bag and left. Everyone is texting and calling me I'm the a-hole and that I need to apologize, but I think it was the reality check my wife needed. Am I the a-hole? Not the a-hole. Not one bit. Sorry, sometimes the truth isn't so nice. It does sound like your wife isn't being a good friend. Also, Kayla was in the hospital twice, but that qualifies as missing the wedding? Did she also not grovel enough and compensate with a gift five times her annual salary for being so thoughtless and selfish? Not the a-hole. 
Hopefully, one day your wife will realize the value of having married someone decent. Surprise, he even married someone like that. They got pregnant when he was 20 and her nearly 30. Combined with the horrible attitude she has, sounds like she targeted someone young and easily manipulated. Unfortunately, not the a-hole. I think everyone is allowed to have a perspective. And I actually think you communicated respectfully. Your wife, on the other hand, seems to be the a-hole for leaving and then obviously trying to get others to harass you. Your wife sounds toxic, and unfortunately, if that's who she is, you might need to consider leaving her. It seems impossible for her to handle any sort of proper discussion, and this is only going to get worse with time. Not the a-hole. Sometimes I give my husband a reality check if I really don't agree with him. His response is to accuse me of never being on his side. I answer with, I'm always on your side. 100%. Just because I don't agree with you or I think you did a crappy thing doesn't mean I don't support you. You did the right thing according to your values. You thought it was important enough to say something. I agree with you, by the way. She didn't like it. That's okay. Here's something to think about. How would you react if she did it to you? I like that. I'm always on your side, 100%. Just because I don't agree with you or I think you did a crappy thing doesn't mean I don't support you. Maybe the OP should use this when he hopefully gets a chance to speak to his wife. He should also point out that he hopes she would do the same thing for him. Not day whole.